what a push, and that's it. That. We've got every single kind of dragon, apart from Electro Dragon. Look at all of that mess. This is insane. All the rocket, we've seen that before. Will it be enough? But the double the rocket double comes up. Rocket. That'll be enough. Oh, that's it. And in the, actually on the... Oh, oh just the longest five HP in that top left for three seconds it left. That so could be the point. Brought to you by Vodafone. The future is exciting. Are you ready? TCL for the next level visual technology. And JBL, enhance the way you listen. Good afternoon and good evening, Clash Royale fans, and welcome to week five of the High School League Clash Royale split number one. My name is Jonathan Arcadian Jansen, and we are joined here again tonight with the lovely Belinda Hope, aka Blendy. How are you doing, Belinda? I'm doing fantastically in my isolation. What about you? Yeah, not too bad. Staying safe in the bubble, but uh, I will not let that come between me and the gaming, of course, uh, and neither should anyone else, I would hope. And so let's take a look at tonight's uh, sch schedule and the tournament format before we kick into the games. And so as a reminder to everyone tonight, we have 65 teams from across 35 schools who will be battling it out in six groups of 12 teams. This is a single round robin tournament over six weeks of league play. We are currently in week five, and so we're getting to the business end of the league play and the top teams in each group will proceed into three weeks of playoffs to crown Australia and New Zealand's best high school Clash Royale team. Now you say that we're at the business end, what are we actually playing for? Well, uh, we have some amazing prizes thanks to Vodafone New Zealand. Winners can choose from Steam, PlayStation, Xbox, or Vodafone credit to the value of $750 for the first place team overall. Second place team will get $525 worth of credit, and the third place team will be walking away with $300 value worth of credit. But that's not all. They'll also be getting, thanks to JBL, some amazing audio prize packs. The first place team, $750 worth of JBL Quantum 400 headphones and the JBL Clip 3 speakers. Second place will be getting $525 worth of value in the JBL Quantum 300 headphones and the JBL Go 2 speakers. And the third place team, they'll walk away with some JBL Quantum 200s to the value of $300. How awesome is that? This is pretty cool. And considering that we're all in our isolation bubbles and we can't go out doing any shopping, this is probably the only way that you're going to be able to get new <laughs> headphones right now. Exactly, and what a way to spend the time. I mean, you got your audio set up, you got your credit, mm -hmm. but you need you, yep. need you need something to play it on. And so thanks what to TCL, we have the Plex mobile phones, which are an absolutely amazing cell phone that you can set up on. Uh, valued in, I think, about $499 Australian. And so let's take a look at the TCL Plex mobile. The new TCL Plex mobile phones. See visuals come to life on a premium 6.3 inch HD display powered by its own display engine developed by TCL. With triple rear cameras and a long lasting fast charging battery at a great price, the TCL Plex is the perfect all rounder phone. How about that? How's that for a prize pack? That is incredible. You know, I still can't believe that we are involved in a tournament where we get to give away such an outstanding prize pack. It's incredible. Absolutely. And uh, let's take a look tonight at the schedule for the teams who will be competing for said prize pack. And so the first game of tonight will be Quanta at 6 p.m. versus MSW. We then have Flinders Crabs versus the Warlocks at 6.20 and Oats versus Rising Phoenix at 6.40. Now these are New Zealand times and games can go shorter or longer depending. And so be sure to hang around the entire broadcast if you have a particular team that you want to check out. But let's take a look at the first head to head of the night. We have Quanta from Mount Albert Grammar School versus MSW, also from Mount Albert Grammar School. Do we have any uh, interesting facts about these teams, Belinda? Well, look, you know, they're from the same school and they're actually classmates. So this could be considered a friendly match, but we do know that we are up for serious prizes here. So I think they're probably going to have to put aside the friendly battles and go a bit serious. They're all in year nine and year 10. Uh, and so, you know, let's um, see how they go. We've got some bands for the 2v2. Uh, I'll tell you what those are. We've got Lava Hound being banned by Quanta and MSW is banning the Fireball. 
Ah, no fireball and no lava hound. Well, it is going to be, as you said, a um, uh, definitely. It might be friendly at school, but at the tonight, it's going to be uh, very much competitive. So, Quanta are coming into this match with five wins and two losses, uh, and MSW are six wins and one loss. And so, wow. Quanta is going to be battling tonight to try and keep in the playoffs, and uh, MSW is going to be trying to keep them out. And so, I think a little bit of friendly rivalry may become quite competitive tonight. Mm, it will be exciting to see. Yes. Um, and both from Mount Ama Grammar School, and so it'll be interesting to see the fallout if uh, they can knock each other out of the <laughs> tournament. But it's got to happen. We still will have one week of gameplay uh, left. And so while we uh, wait for the game to load in, we do have, uh, we can do a quick recap actually of the of the matches, I think. And so uh, just a reminder for everyone at home, these matches are taking place over the first 2v2, then into a one versus one. And if there is still a tie, we'll be we going to the king of the hill. Um, the 2v2 battles and the 1v1 players must be different. And so let's take a look at the first 2v2 as the game kicks off MSW versus Quanta. All right, well, we're all waiting for the start. Here we go. There's a miner coming out somewhere straight away. Here we go. Yeah, there's a Quanta on the bottom, MSW on the top. Quanta with the quick attack with the miner, taking a little bit of damage. And then a pretty good defense. So the MSW has a slight statistical advantage here, just, just, just keeping in mind. We've got a baby dragon that's sitting out to take out just about everything in its path. There's nothing defending that baby dragon at the moment. Makes it all yeah, and, the way to that tower. <laughs> and a fantastic Electro Wizard on the uh, right-hand side there by Quanta, keeping out all of that attack. So we've got a strong defense coming down. We've got the Battle Ram. We've got uh, the Wizard coming down. We've got some Flying Machine. And a flying machine makes quick work of that lumberjack, and then Quanta with their own flying machine coming through, battling away, trying to take out those skeletons. They won't be able to make it through. And balloons then two balloons. Both sides. Look at that. We're going to get some bombs. Are they going to take it out? Oh, that one on the right is going to hit. A free there spell. Great position there. Stops the mega minion, gets one attack off, and the bomb coming down. Will pop the damage. A lot of air defense here from both teams. I feel as if they feel quite familiar with each other's decks. <laughs> yeah, they've probably been practicing all day. Since, you know, it's first day of the school holidays today. That's true. That's true. So they've got a lot of time on their hands for some Clash Royale. 1,600 health on the right hand uh, tower, Princess Tower for Quanta versus 1,200 on the right hand for MSW. Closing in on one minute to go in regular play. And slow down that Valkyrie. It seems there's like Quanta has a lot of control. On the board. No, there's not. The archer so getting they're through all there. up, waiting. Are we going to see multiple balloons come out again? And are they going to go on the same track or opposite? And here we go. One track. Another each free spell coming down. And that is going to get the princess. Is that 374? Is that enough damage? Not quite. 100, 100 health left. left. Okay, so we need an attack to come up on there, and that will be game if we can get something. But there's a strong attack coming down, and that battle ram is releasing its barbarians. And the poison almost taking down the electro wizard, but not quite. We've got a wizard hitting into the electro wizard with the balloon. It's going to be taken down. And the rage as well, so that's quickly poison, hitting poison up here. on the right hand side. That's poison, all. It's dead. It's gone. It. Four, Four seconds left to go. go. They waited till the last minute. <laughs> and they are well gone. Done. Well done to Quanta. That's the first game. That's one point over to Quanta versus MSW. MSW coming into this, arguably the favorites, with six wins mm. um, versus, you know, only the five wins on Quanta's side. But well played. Any any key takeaways from that match? I think we saw some excellent air attacks there. Uh, multiple balloons coming out at the same time going on both tracks and then with the addition of rage spell that makes that balloon work a little bit faster and harder so that was really good to see and the flying machine and the baby dragon all of those things working together to try and take out the little guys that were coming out and uh, and really get those tower attacks going down and we saw the poison again we saw that last week as well the poison won the game absolutely Who very popular thought? card I, I 
I was surprised that MSW seemed to have a lot of air defense units. Like both both teams had a lot of air units. Um, and to have air units, you know, against a balloon, you think it'll be quite easy to take down. Mm-hmm. Um, what was what, what do you think made the difference? Is there a reason that they was there a particular reason that they could get their air units through into the base? Uh, I feel like uh, there was no there was no troop air things. So, you know, like a, a minion horde or bats, that might have been something to be able to attack those balloons a little bit more. Sure, sure. And because there Makes wasn't sense. any, it was able to get through. So let's see the next game. We're into a 1v1. We are, and it is Astro on Quanta versus GG Get Wrecked from MSW. Mm-hmm. MSW are going to not want to be dropping this round. And so we'll see how it turns out. Fairly even start. Team's just building up their elixir. Here comes Astro with a cannon to try and fight off. No, we don't see a cannon very often. No, I don't. We don't, we don't do uh, No, we don't. Is it going to go for the uh, the goblins or the Inferno Tower? We've got some goblins, but now the Inferno Tower. And it's just missed the poison, so that keeps it alive a little longer. Quite a lot of value out of that cannon. Is is there a reason we don't see cannons often? I think there, there might just be other cards that, that people end up valuing instead of a cannon, but if you've got a particular reason, particularly with these two teams that know each other and probably know how they play and what's in their decks, maybe it's a strategic move. That's very true. Inferno Tower coming down. I'll make quick work of the little knight there. So that's the, again, the correct placement of the Inferno Tower and right in the middle so it can draw everything in, whether it comes through the air or on the ground. And Astro trying to hold on to as much elixir as he can before dropping some units. Unfortunately. Now that's very, <laughs> it was very good placement of uh, that Mega Minion there because that attracted the Inferno Tower so the cannon could, you know, do some damage on the, on the main tower there. Now the graveyard was placed there, but got countered pretty hard by the poison. Very versatile card as it's turning out, mm. poison. Um, to be able to do quite a lot of damage to towers when you need it, but also counter cards like graveyard. And a princess being dropped think, to try and take some chip damage. I think I'm going to make a special note that poison is one of the cards of the season that everybody should try adding to your deck to see how it works out for you, because it's a cheap card and it's a surprisingly good card when you can use it right. Yeah, absolutely. Rocket coming down to take out the unit there. Um, chose to not go for their tower any damage. Graveyard coming through with the log being used. Is poison available? There it is. It's going to go to counter that graveyard, but it might not be enough. Yeah, the tower is going down. Wow, look, that graveyard plus the poison was a really good combo. There so, was a cool. lot of damage. <laughs> Are we going to see in 13 seconds the Inferno Tower being a major attack on Quantum Towers. I'm just not sure that we can get all the way through there. Four seconds left. There's no way. Quanta taking it out. (laughs) So they win the 2v2. They take the first game in the 1v1. Now we are left with another... This is a best of three for the 1v1s, and so we will see Astro and GG get wrecked face off again. Um, But that was a pretty dominating performance by Quanta or Astro on uh, Quanta's behalf in that game. I yep. really, really enjoyed the uh, the graveyard poison combo just to do phenomenal mm. amounts of damage. Usually you see an enemy place a poison on top of a graveyard, but this time it was uh, Astro with both the graveyard and the poison. Really effective strategy. Anything you uh, would like to mention on to that game? Uh, well, well, we, we saw might a couple have... of interesting... Oh, we might not have time. We'll just get straight into the game. So these guys uh, want to get right back into it. <laughs> well, why not? You know, you're on fire, so... Now we've got a tornado this time. So have we changed up the decks or did we just not see a tornado in the last game? I think so. We've got two brand new cards here. It looks like GG Get Wrecked has taken on a new strategy, but surprisingly, Astro has as well. They're pulling out Angel, Tornado, Magic Archer, a whole lot of new cards being shown here. A lot of versatility, obviously, in these two players. Well, you know, it's a little bit risky when you just completely smash the last game. Do you change up your whole deck? <laughs> Yeah, that is, but I think I like I like the confidence. I think uh, yeah. maybe Astro might be showing something a little bit different. Who knows? There could be some player research that has gone on here. 
some little now we've got our, our elixir golem coming out now this is one that we've seen a few weeks ago doing so well this is the one remember that it releases the elixir bubbles and whoever gets to attack those bubbles claims that elixir plus the elixir bubbles do damage on their own and it looks like there's going to be the run the risk you can run with the elixir golem is that you you can give the opponent too much elixir but they're going to get a lot of damage down it's going to be worth it yeah we've got an electro dragon we've got a paddle healer we've got that elixir golem there's all sorts going on and that's our art has gone down astro coming through for quanta with a phenomenal push in terms of card value <laughs> Absolutely. Look at that. Well played, of course. I mean, you know, even we're just considering how well played that was. Wow. <laughs> the boxing fish. What a phenomenal play. And just to take, take stock here, we're a minute left in the game, one tower down. Quanta Astro has two, three units now on the field, but he still has similar elixir to GG Get Wrecked, who had nothing. And so that just goes to show the advantage that he's currently running at. Let's see if uh, Get Wrecked can pull this back, but it is not looking good. Now the Magic Archer is going to take out some tower damage there, but we've got a lot of goblins and bats and the rascals. Fireball will take those out. And you can see here the, uh, the wizards going through. The frost wizard is ice wizard is knocking down, slowing those units. While the little elixir bubbles are taking out the health on the king tower. Twenty-five, 25 seconds, seconds left. left. The electro dragon is. Oh, it's gone. Now, probably I should have mentioned what the bands are for the 1v1s. We've got Barbarian Hut and the regular Golem. So that's why we're seeing the Elixir Golem. Yes, uh, it's usually a pretty common replacement. Uh, five seconds left in the game, and it's not going to be enough. The Miner comes through, but <laughs> cannot take down that tower. It is good games all well around. Done. Astro from Quanta taking out the second 1v1, which means that Quanta is the one taking out this match they win the they win the 2v2 wow. they win the best of three on the 1v1 there will be no tiebreaker um because that's a clean sweep by quanta great performance any uh what do you think of those matches well look that was outstanding and i feel for their friendly match you know when they when they finally are allowed to meet up at school again how are things going to play out but you know one thing i noticed that we didn't talk about during that game was that their spectators all had emotes of the cards that were being played <laughs> i thought that was pretty cute you've got a pretty extensive emote collection yeah absolutely um and that actually puts quanta up on the six wins and two losses alongside msw now six wins two losses so they're now equalized wow. on the leaderboard quanta with a fantastic performance but that is not all we have we've got two more games coming up tonight and so we're going to go to a quick break and then we'll be right back with more excitement and so we'll see you shortly Good afternoon and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are back with the Clash Royale High School League Split 1. We've just finished our first game tonight with Quanta versus MSW, and Quanta coming away with the win. And now we are coming back for our next match. How are you going, Belinda? Oh, fantastic. That was a very exciting selection of games there, and now we're ready for some more. Absolutely. So without further ado, let's just head straight into our head-to-head -head for the second match of tonight. We have Flinders Crabs, our favorite from Flinders at Flinders Christian Community College versus Warlocks from Mount Albert Grammar School as our second match. And we talked a little bit earlier about this being the starting to get to the business end of league play. Flinders are coming in with six wins and one loss with Warlocks undefeated so far at seven wins. Flinders will be looking for, uh, for an opening here. Do we know anything about these teams for this evening? Well, they're exceptionally polite to each other. The team captain, Taunton Chris of Flinders, would like to wish Mags Warlocks the best of luck in the final battles before the playoffs start. <laughs> like, isn't that nice? Now, a little bit more about Flinders. We have seen these guys play before. Uh, uh, now, Taunton Chris reached 6,000 trophies and is experimenting with the newest cards in search for a new meta. And Wakanda 
aims to smash past the 5,300 line by the end of next season. And Wookie Gas. Now, would you believe Wookie Gas watches the trilogy of trilogies every year, which of course is Star Wars. So that's all of the movies over two days. Now, I'm not sure uh, which order you do them in, in that trilogy of trilogies, but that could be important. And Warlocks. Did you know their school motto is Pearl Augusta, Ad Augusta, which means through hardship to glory. So here we go. Ah, well, we will have, they'll have to go through some hardship today to get to that glory. Warlocks defending their undefeated streak thus far. And Flinders, it sounds like Taunting Chris has uh, been training hard to try and be able to knock down that title from them. Um, and again, with this far into the tournament, it is going to be one of those games where we decide uh, how they go in the how, how league play turns out for them. And so let's take a look straight into the game just as it loads up. Do we have the bands for the 2v2, Blendy? We do, yes. Uh, Mega Knight and the Golem. So uh, I wonder if we'll be seeing the Elixir Golem replace the regular Golem or, or some other kind of giant. So let's see what we've got. And oh, as you said, the giant plays giant away. Coming out. Yeah. <laughs> and it is Wookie Gas and Wakanda on Flinders Crabs on the bottom of the screen versus Mr. Killer and Bwem from Warlocks on the top side. Both teams we've seen very strong performances in the past, and so I'm excited to see how this one turns out. Certainly. Now that Inferno Dragon is going to take out that giant just before it reaches the tower, but it's followed it up is. by a whole lot of other actions and a, and a minor that had come out to mid-screen there. <laughs> it might have, I'm not sure if there was a misclick or if they just needed the extra yeah. firepower in there, but a giant battle happening right on the bridge uh, for both teams. And the balloon and the lumberjack coming down, he'll be distracted, but when he falls, that raid spell is going to the balloon will move fast. Oh what yeah, we've got a tornado. Uh, I feel bad for Flinders. There was a great combo there with the tornado to pull the balloon away while it was being poisoned, um, but it wasn't quite enough. The balloon got down one drop plus the bomb, uh, 1,200 damage on the Princess Tower. Warlock's in a pretty strong position. Now, after all of that action, we've got a very quiet deck. They're just waiting, storing up the elixir. And um, we're Furnace. Ritz repeating from just before. We've got the furnace and we've got the, <laughs> the giant coming out again. The baby dragon. Now, will that take out that furnace? Now, the giant moving on to the left side now. I think if Flinders had the choice, they're going to reset and start the battle on the on the left side of the on the field um, to just protect that tower on the right if they can. Oh, now we've got a card that we hardly ever see. That's the, the goblin. Um, the goblin hut? Goblin Hux, yeah. Yeah, that was an odd one, but the P.E.K.K.A. coming through. Here comes the Inferno Dragon, which is a fantastic counter to the P.E.K.K.A. with the ramping damage, but Zap to reset it. And he might just almost get through some great value there from the P.E.K.K.A. What is Flinders going to do on the right-hand side as that balloon comes through? Here comes the Poison and the Tornado. The Poison and the Rage no. and the Tornado all on top of each other. That's a quite an interesting spell <laughs> combination there. <laughs> They definitely did not want that balloon getting through because it would have only taken a couple of attacks and that Princess Tower would be down. Now we've got a Lava Hound coming out now that's kind of sneaked down the side. Lava Hound this versus Baby Dragon. Got some big push here for Warlocks. They're going to use all their elixir to try and get through here. Lava Hound trudging through, taking up a lot of damage and it'll pop into its little, little pups. And yeah, here they're... comes the Miner. No, not quite. Can they hold it? Three seconds left to go. And they did. Oh, they managed poison. to clear it. They did. Look, not... that poison is just slowly taking it down, but uh, we're in overtime. It's enough, though, we'll go it's enough for Warlocks to spell cycle. All they have to do, I think, unless unless Flinders Crabs can do something quickly, um, one more poison cycle, and that tower might say good night. Oh, the miner has come down and is that that is the game <laughs> not able to quite pull it away there i think the tower got a little bit too low and unfortunately flinders will drop this first set with the one oh, with the two versus two sorry um two warlocks well deserved warlocks you can see why they're such a dominating team fantastic performance any key moments or key takeaways from that match you want to mention 
Well, you know, I think we were quite surprised about everything that was going on there. There was so much going on, and then there was really quiet patches, uh, and you could see the card cycle starting up again, and it was good to see that when it did repeat itself that they tried a different track uh, rather than just repeating the same thing, which we do see fairly frequently that teams try and just do the same thing again and run into the same trouble. But this time it worked out. Let's get exactly. into the and next game. A really good indication of two really good teams here. We're seeing Taunting Chris versus Aqua. We heard Taunting Chris uh, has been training very hard. Let's see if his training pays off versus Aqua on Warlocks. And can Flinders Crab pull back the one versus one? Now we're on the, we're on the, uh, the birthday cake uh, theme here. On top of the cake the with all now. the balloons. <laughs> the bandit gets through, but the bats quickly take them out. Now, this is going to be a lot of damage. Minor plus the bats coming through. Now that was the a perfect wizard. placement of the, uh, the magic archer there, taking out that uh, the miner, already waiting. And the battle ram as well, tanking the musketeer as he comes through. Make quick work of the mini picker, and maybe even no, the, the next bandit comes through. And the spooky royal ghost taking out the musketeer, Ooh. or maybe not. Well, it did pretty well. The bats um, can take out that royal ghost, but it did some good damage. Now we wait again. We do. Towers are fairly even on both sides. We'll see if Taunting Chris chooses to do something different. Waits for the bandit to come out and sends the miner onto the opposite side. And the archer will take quick work of that. And I think the archer is going to path left. No, not quite. Just slightly off. He'll work, walk down that right track. And the Electro Wizard come down. He just get taken out by the tower. Oh, and we've added in a double whammy here. What's going to make it? It's the Daddy Picker versus everywhere. the Mini Picker. Yeah. And the zap take out those bats, that was very good because I think we've got one hit in there. And when you've got a pecker, one hit is all you need. <laughs> they hit hard. And the royal ghost coming back out. Sneak past the musketeer. And he'll work his way all the way in. Will you take out the bandit? Not quite. Bandit v bandit. bandit. Why are the balloon? Never mind the bandit battle, there's a big attack coming down the left channel. Yes, certainly is. Is, is it going to get it's through? Not quite, I believe. That bomb might be close enough. Yeah, it is. No, it's really it's really right. Right. Yeah, it is. Just so the, the magic archer has actually got extra good value out of that. Didn't even get any damage, and it's still doing tower damage. Oh, fantastic trade for Taunting Chris. He got so much damage on that right-hand side tower while the battle was going on on the left. All he's going to need is a couple spells, and this game might come down. Uh, Taunting Chris looking to even it up, but a big attack coming down Aqua on that left-hand channel. Time is counting down. Get down. 192. What can we get quickly out there? And or the is it going to go inside the time again? The daddy pick is going to come all the way. He's going to just knock that little mini guy out. Is he going to get one hit? One hit is all he needs. That's it. Wow. I can't believe and that. that uh, <laughs> Sam paid it all the way up. That it just got there and that was that's, the game. That's what pickers do. They're just real big yeah. tanky. They'll slowly walk down the lane and take it out. And that is Flinders saying, never say die with Taunting Chris coming out with the first win. But lucky for uh, Warlocks, the 1v1s are a best of three. And so they will have another attempt at this. But that, I mean, it seemed fairly close, but Taunting mm. Chris still managed to come out on in the end there. Is there any changes you think are going to happen uh, for Warlocks for, to, to bring this back? Uh, look, you know, I think that both teams play very strategically and they're very clever and they're doing things that I think we are not necessarily expecting to see and they'll play something and we, you know, we're going, well, I would not wonder why they're playing that like that. <laughs> and actually, it's so strategic that it gets in the win. So let's see how this next game plays out. So Stan's little skeletons just drop behind the King Tower there, splitting up on both sides and a similar start for Aqua. Um, it looks like they've changed up, at least Taunting Chris has changed up his deck. He's gone for the Expo cycle by the looks of it. Will that pay off? The Tesla coming in to Expo. defend the Expo. Pull up the Tesla, that's a pretty good combo. <laughs> and we've got the, uh, the Inferno Dragon coming down as well. He's got to keep going. And the amount of damage the Expo is getting on the tower. <laughs> Just absolutely wow. phenomenal. 
900 like health. <laughs> and so this we do have the Xbox cycle here good. pulling out. It could be. Taunting Chris is, uh, has got a lot of spells that can protect his expo. And so as he brings it down, he's gonna. we're going to see him drop the Tesla a couple of times. We're going to see the log coming out, um, the Ice Wizard to stop and slow those attacks from the Inferno. I think Aqua might be calling good game because he knows there's not a lot his deck can do about that in particular. Now, I think that we've got the, uh, a whole lot of things coming out in anticipation of the next expo being played. Uh, perhaps the Inferno Dragon was played a little bit early. I would have saved that up for when the expo was actually played out so that it could take out that. <laughs> and the same with the Mega Knight. Some great emotes coming out here from Taunting Chris <laughs> living up to his name. And now, interestingly, we've got the expo placed in the middle, not going for the tower, which I thought, you know, we could just be game if that, that was played out like it was in the last round. Yeah, that was interesting. I think that the only thing I can think of is that he maybe they're resetting their cycles um, because he wasn't happy with when it's being played. We know timing is very important when we get to the uh, very strategic end of this game. And so maybe they're just burning their cards, trying to soft reset um, and then wait for the opportune moment but the knight there getting some decent damage and 300 health left on that princess tower 50 seconds left in this 1v1 now that was possibly a mistake and also there was an oops that came out that was uh playing that that ice golem that came out which didn't do any attack on that knight that came in and now we're down to 326 Yep, exactly. It's, it's, it's becoming a very tight game for Aqua. Not looking too good. We might see another... Um, I don't want to jinx it, but we might see another King of the Hill here in this series, which would be a great fitting for these two teams. Don't have to pull all those guys together. But a massive attack coming out here from Aqua. This, uh, the Tesla and the Ice Wizard here are actually doing a fantastic job of defending. Oh, Walk look at the rocket. Down. That's going to take that out. <laughs> no, thank you. And that. is the bomb going to do enough? It is! The bomb did enough damage yes, from the balloon! The so game goes into in overtime! That was unexpected! <laughs> and look at that! You know, that rocket really was a surprise, saving that up. We didn't know that that was there. And I we've think got he was going to almost be in <laughs> Absolutely, we're seeing the stray combo coming out here. And again, a big attack coming through from Aqua. I feel as if Taunting Chris was holding that rocket to do a bit of a BM last second end, but he got caught a little yes. bit by the massive attack coming through um, and didn't manage to secure that. Will that be a regret? We'll find out. Taunting Chris Look, it's thinking so about it. Even. The, the air attacks coming through the uh, Inferno Dragon and the Balloon combo, that's pretty hard to defend against. We've got um, the Ice Wizard slowing things down and the Tesla trying to take things out. Now we've got another a balloon coming through. <laughs> and the rocket here. That's what should have happened last round. I feel like if he had used the rocket earlier to take out <laughs> the massive <laughs> onslaught, he would have protected his tower. Now we've got an Expo and the Tesla together. That here it comes. He's defending it with all of his troops. He's letting the Expo go to town on that Mega Knight, but I think it might just be too much. Such a yeah. strong attack coming through. It's just wave after wave. The Expo's doing as well as it can. Backed up by that Ice Wizard. I've never seen an Ice Wizard do actually as well as this. I mean, it's <laughs> such a... I think it wins the best supporting character in this game. Yeah. So much slow coming through here, but a massive attack by Aqua. We've got the two Inferno Dragon bats and a balloon with the miner coming through, but the rocket is going to say, see you later. Nice combo. Only 10 seconds left to go. Who's in the lead right now? If this ends, Taunt and Chris is going to end up taking the win for the lowest tower health. The yeah, and look, it is so close. It's only, oh, oh, look at that. It's, it did oh, end. Tiebreaker. And Aqua. There's losing only his tower with the lowest in it. Wow, that what was a so close, close game. But you know what that means? Mm. That means that we're going to a king of the hill. So wow. Flinders took out the 1v1, Warlocks took out the 2v2, and now we're going to have to go into the king of the hill. And while that's being organized, Belinda, do you want to give us a quick recap on what we can expect to see from the king of the hill? So the king of the hill, we get to see the players face off each other and they play each other until somebody loses and then somebody else from their team takes over until there is one winner left. It is the ultimate now, I can last tell man you, standing. 
It certainly is. Now, the bands for the King of the Hill, uh, we have a Mega Knight and the Golem. Ah, uh -huh, interesting. And Mega Knight was pretty important um, there for Aqua, although it didn't end up coming through in the end. Um, I feel mm. like that's going to hurt Aqua a little bit in his play style so far. And sorry, the second band was, was Mega Knight and the... Was the Golem. So the Golem. we haven't seen anything uh, that would replace a Golem, but we were using other things instead, like uh, the Expo and the Tesla and buildings instead of a, a tanky machine that's coming through. So let's see how we go in the King of the Hill. Oof. First match, Taunting Chris, the 1v1 specialist from Flinders versus Buem from Warlocks, who was part of the 2v2 squad. We will see who continues on and who gets knocked out. Oh, I love King of the Hills. They're so exciting. Buem burning to one of the five elixir. We've got a balloon coming down. And, oh, with a nice rage as well. Unfortunately, I think Chris might have messed up that fireball placement and knocked the balloon towards his tower instead of away mm. from which ended up getting the uh, balloon it drops after it dies directly on top of the tower losing out a little bit of health but the but the one uh, attack from the unit it levels things up <laughs> certainly has so we're essentially back at the beginning and we come out with the tiny little skeletons seeking out drawing out some of the uh the defense and so a different, uh, uh, this is the third game in a row with three different strategies here from Taunting Chris. I just want to point that out. That shows incredible versatility. And the Ice Golem's working towards the way towards the bridge with the little Skeleton Knights coming through. And oh, there goes the Ram Rider. Sorry, Hog Rider. Followed right up with the, with the log. Now, the, the follow-up log is useful to play when you're anticipating uh, troops being played down, uh, you know, like a skeleton army or something, but none were placed. But we do have the balloon that has made it, and its bomb and has dropped. And now they, he got the rage spell through, got two drops off with the passive or with the uh, after death bomb. That's doing a lot of damage. And Taunting Chris ended up using his ice, uh, or no, sorry, that was Warlock dropping the ice spell down there for any further defense to keep it alive as long as possible. Now the Hog Rider right. jumping right over the river to go straight to that uh, building in the center there. It's got and a, a good little bit of life left. Win. It's not looking good so far for Taunting Chris, and as the 1v1 specialist, you'd hope that he'd be able to last a little bit longer than this. But these deadly balloons, he uses the ice spell to stop all the defenses, and again, two attacks off with the after death bomb. That'll take the tower down to about 200 health, 227 we see there. It's a strong, strong first match here from Gwen. Certainly is. We need a little bit more defense. Uh, we're dragging away the attacks that are coming through. That's good, but we leave the towers unprotected. But I think we're going to go into overtime. But we will, but how long will it be for? But here, here comes the balloon, and so we're guessing we've got the rage spell and the freeze in pocket. Here it comes, and the balloon comes down. Oh, the there floor. we go. And you, Gwim, you, Bwim, takes out Taunting Chris in the wow. first King of the Hill match. That's, that's a that's, game. It's a problem for Flinders Crabs. That's their 1v1 specialist gone, knocked yeah. out. You know, they're one of their star players. And so now the remaining two players from the 2v2 have to face off against Buem. Warlock's looking pretty strong right now. Certainly are. So, you know, that, that was an interesting game. And I think you pointed out a, uh, a really good strategy that Taunting Chris was using three different types of decks for all the games we've seen. Um, you know, I wonder if, because we've all got heaps of time on our hands at the moment that is it's time that we all try and practice different decks that we've got set up so that you too can be an exceptionally versatile player and we head into yeah, the next round and one strategy it is wookie gas taking the helm for flinders crabs versus again you gwim you Bwim for warlocks but it looks like maybe that match is going to be replayed there might have been a technical issue there for one of the players um and so we'll wait until that game is reloaded 
Um, so what I mean, like I said a little bit earlier, it's a little bit of a problem for Flinders um, that they take their captains being taken out. Um, and you know, do do you think that it's we're going to see it, that type of versatility coming through from Flinders' other players? Is that a difficult thing to try and do? Is to be able to use so many different types of decks? Well, yeah. I mean, look, certainly you've got to try different things. You know, one one deck combination I tried a little while ago was seeing if I could build a successful deck using only legendary cards. Have you tried doing that? Uh, I've always. I don't, I don't think I have enough legendary cards. <laughs> I've thought about it. Um, but is it, is it? Well, I'd ask you if it's any good, but it looks like we might have got a reset like here. Um, yeah, yep, everything's coming again. back to normal. I'll I'll tell you about that uh, later. Oh, no, we're going to replay we'll that again. There's some, some more technical issues. We'll get back onto our question. We can finish that question now. Have I ever built a legendary card uh, deck out of legendary cards? No, I didn't. And I, I didn't feel it would be super good. We're switching back well, to the game, though. Yeah, we are. Well, hopefully we carry on with this. Well, let's see how, how it all plays out. We've got a flying machine coming out. Flying machine taking down the furnace being played here. And a wizard just to take make quick work of those uh, flying pests. And a prince coming through. We haven't seen a prince for a while, but they're, of course, pretty powerful. And it is fairly well undefended. Ooh, yeah, good zap there to take out those, uh, that real estate to try and take that down. But here comes Flinders Crab's arch enemy, a balloon with rage. And, and a tornado. <laughs> well played. Was watching the last match. certainly was. <laughs> he figured that one out pretty quick. And the prince has to take down all the shields. Um, to let the Princess Tower make quick work of those units coming through. So now it we're looks back to like a quiet moment. we are. And Bwem's got a similar, I think he's using the exact same deck. Why change off something that's working for him? Let's see if Wookiee can uh, bring it back. Flying Machine and Valkyrie backed up with the Knight. So the flying machine that will take out air things and well and land things as well and the knight coming through to just clean up whatever was left now princess in the background getting pretty good value too the dragon's going to go straight for the tower and that's disappeared she also managed to kill the uh, spawns from the from the furnace there it goes pop see you later i love the princess's range <laughs> certainly it is excellent and I think Princess, um, you know, that you think, oh, it only does a little bit of damage. I won't bother sending out anything to attack it. But after a few hits, it's actually done quite a significant damage, and it can easily go for bottom. Oh, absolutely. And the bat's making quick work there of that tower. I think Wookiee has definitely got Yu Gwenmu Bren's uh, combo on lockdown. He knows exactly what to do. Baby Dragon coming through with the furnace. And he'll answer that very swiftly for the Valkyrie, who can't really do much in return. 30 seconds left in the match and currently and looking at this uh, yeah look the uh, the knight is going to hopefully make it i think the knight has got its speed up it's got its big hit in got 1100 on one side oh no here it goes the balloon's coming unmatched in the right hand lane the ice spell comes Five down the balloon minutes. gets two drops oh there is the game all over oh, oh, i feel so bad for flinders crabs in that one because he had such a you know so wait before we start there's one match left don't get me wrong there's one player <laughs> left on flinders who might be able to pull us back but i felt like wookie had done such a great job of defending that uh balloon combo so many times but he let it through just once he overcommitted on one side and the match was over well look you know these things happen but uh that's such a powerful combo that's another one that we should make a note of that you can go and practice during the week and see if you can master that epic combo absolutely and while we wait for the next game to uh just load in it will be um wakanda who will be flinder's last hope versus uh Buem again who's taken down the first two members of uh mm. of flinder's grabs he might be the only one to do it and here we see wakanda Last Hope of Flinders Crabs versus Yugwemu Boyam, who needs to change his name. Seriously, man. It's really hard to say out loud. Coming through on Warlocks. What will we see? Again, same deck from Boyam. He's not going to change what's already been working. 
what I think that's, the, that's the right choice to make. Okay, now we've got the Magic Archer and the Battle Ram heading up. Magic Archer's getting all that damage in. Now, we know that there's going to be a heavy air attack coming through at some stage with an Ice Spell and a Rage. What cards do we need to see from Wakanda to be able to stop that happening? Uh, to stop the Ice Spell and the Rage. Well, can't really stop the Rage, but... Let, well, I mean... It's, um... Well, look, we're seeing a Poison coming out, taking out that uh, tower in the middle, plus the Princess Tower. Yeah, Poison does, definitely is going to help against that combo. The Electro Wizard will also be very useful in slowing down that attack. The Pekka being taken down by a lot of air attacks there. The Bandit coming in. But I don't think... I mean, I don't think that Wakanda's really got the, til the, the tools to really stop that attack. And we'll find out here. Here we come. On the right-hand side, the left-hand side, Lumberjack coming down with the balloon behind it. And what can Wakanda that do to stop it? That is an excellent combo there. Look, that, that combo of the Lumberjack with the Rage and the balloon taking out There's the nothing. tower, and that balloon just makes it straight to the King Tower. And now he's dropped his Ice Spell. He stopped the towers from getting it down. This balloon is doing havoc all over the base 700 he's gonna get one more drop not quite that'll drop oh, the king tower 500 to the king tower absolutely seven although a good counter attack on the side of wakanda there, getting his princess or wem's princess tower down to 700 health the battle ramp coming down on the right hand side now wakanda wants to try and keep the battle on the right hand side if he can make Boyam commit his resources but he's not going to here's the dragon here's the, here's the balloon this is this game right here. Look, that balloon is going to do it, and if not, then the baby dragon will take it out. 200 so to go. 200 to go. One hit the baby dragon. Down. Oh, 71. There we go. That's it. <laughs> One more. Well, that is game over. Bwem single-handedly taking out the entire Flinders squad. 3-4-0 in the King of the Hill, which will give Warlocks the win overall. That is going to put them on eight wins and zero losses, wow. continuing their undefeated streak. And you can see why. That was Bwem, um, of all players, part of the 2v2, to be able to take out those three. That just shows how strong of a squad they are. Um, key takeaways from that match from you. What did you enjoy to see? Uh, look, those air attacks were super strong. The, the combinations with the balloon and the lumberjack carrying the rage spell, uh, followed up with uh, the baby dragon. You know, all of these things are excellent strategies that you can be thinking about practicing in your own deck. Yep, absolutely. And you can just go, this goes to show if you can master one strategy really well, and if you're versing opponents who don't have a counter of it, who can't think on their feet and really counter those, then it can be devastating for the game. But that is only match two of tonight. We have one more match coming to you after this break. And so stick around and we'll see you soon. Good afternoon and good evening, Clash Royale fans! It is the Clash Royale High School League Split 1, and we are back for the third game of tonight. My name is Jonathan Jansen, a.k.a. Arcadian, and I'm here with Blinda Hope, a.k.a. Blendy, if you are just joining us. However, we've had some pretty amazing games tonight, right, Blendy? We certainly have. Look, I've been writing down a list of excellent combos that I think that everybody should try. Should I, should I tell you some of them, or should we save that for a little later? Let's see if we find any new ones into the uh, into the next game. Uh, but let's take a look at the head-to-head. -head, and we will be seeing Oats from Mount Albert Grammar School versus Rising Phoenix as well from Mount Albert Grammar School tonight. And either of these teams might have some good combos. What do we know about these teams so far? Have we got any information on them? We certainly do because we love having uh, information sent through about the team. So let me tell you about Oats. So player Meow is very good at technology. Ratchet and Clank 10 has reached Master Level 2. And Tanky Online has got 2,000 rating in chess. And wow. would you, yeah, would you like to know what Oats's overall team strategy is? It's actually that they are, they are literally OP. 
so that's pretty good. And Rising <laughs> Phoenix, <laughs> Electra Boy and Nishu are both from India, and Red Gecko is from New Zealand. And the hobbies that they all have in common are sports and fun gaming like Clash Royale. So two Mount Albert Grammar School teams going head to head, head to head again as a friendly slash actual serious battle because we're up for real prizes. <laughs> Absolutely. I just want to touch on one thing that you mentioned there before we get into the game is that I really want to, and this is more on a serious note, I really like the fact that um, they slipped it in there, but they say Electro Boy and Nishu uh, are Indian and Red Gecko is a New Zealander and they both have, you know, sports, or they all, all three of them have sports and gaming um, in common. And I think that it's just so cool to highlight the fact that no matter what, you know, background you're from or what, you know, nationality you are, is that people can come together over games and really enjoy and have fun together. Um, but we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Let's kick off into the game. We've got Rising Phoenix versus Oats, and the game is starting off to a fast pace. Oh, we've got fellows flying everywhere and goblins going on. Let me tell you the bands. We've got uh, Giant Skeleton and Balloon Bands. Now, we saw so many balloons in the last game, so it'll be interesting to see what's being used instead. Absolutely. And a uh, Sparky here taking on a pecker and he manages to take him out that was actually a really cool play um we had we just saw there with the electro wizard coming down and then being stopped by the skeletons and so the sparky could come out and get uh, the maximum value there here comes the electro wizard again Sparky's your favorite so yeah there's some good plays here it is i really enjoy sparky personally i used to be a mega knight fan um i'm now enjoying sparky i'm probably going through the motions <laughs> <laughs> And the princess getting great value there on that minion horde. Now it's princess versus yeah, princess. Yeah, princess versus princess. Viva la royalty! <laughs> and we're down to Man. 900, below 1,000 on, on one side there. And we've got the battle ram versus some skeletons and some bats. And Oats to a really strong start. Rational Clan can tank you online. Um, really oh, pushing look at that. through. He's got that taken down tower out of nowhere just no elixir left for the defense for rising phoenix can they come back it's all of a sudden the tables have turned we've got a sparky and another goblin bell now i really again I, another really I combo i really enjoyed but a fantastic defense there by rising phoenix dropping all the right units in the right places oh and the electro wizard survives here which is going to be very important a big skeleton coming through, cleaning up everything. Good defenses from both sides, but definitely but the game is in control. Oh. Now down to 542. I don't think uh, we're going to get much attack coming through here. We've got a large attack coming down. We've got the we've got Inferno Dragon Inferno against each, each other, <laughs> <laughs> and the big Pekka really big attack coming through here on phoenix's side nice combos with the electro wizard sitting behind uh he's going to clean up those minions and another mega knight coming through and unfortunately and those skeletons aren't going to be well we've seen here is a lot of uh, like clever attacks and defense against each other not much was able to get through to the buildings until now now we're down to the king tower it's uh massive attack. five four. seconds left are they going to use a spell to get the tower it might be all over oh, no. yes. what it's finished but two princess towers i didn't realize they had the other princess tower i was like wait what's they happened just got it. yeah they just got it <laughs> and then the, the princess took out that second tower as we went to the countdown that was that incredible. was so that was the last second oh that was impressive um wait so just give me while they while we i processed that can you again break down <laughs> what just happened in that last one second Okay, so we had a whole lot of a huge push uh, coming down onto the bottom king tower. The princess tower was taken out, and there was a there was a whole lot of skeletons and a whole bunch of things going on. And I think that's what distracted you from seeing what was going on at the top, where the princess tower had got down to a hundred and four, but there was a princess that was able to shoot its arrows, and of course that was enough to take out that on the buzzer and take the game. Wow, what a 2v2. And so that will give Oats. Uh, no, sorry, I believe Rising Phoenix is the one who ended up... 
which team ended up winning that? I didn't even <laughs> see, it was it was Oats, wasn't it? The bottom team ended up getting both of the yeah. getting both the towers. So Oats taking away right. the first game on the two v two. Man, what a what a game! What a last game of the night. <laughs> um, and now we'll be heading into the one v one where we see. Meow on Oats' side versus Nishu from Rising Phoenix, and we do see Oats with that one point. Oh, that was a crazy game. Let's see if this one's going to be as crazy. Now, let me tell you the bands for this game. Uh, we have Giant Skeleton and we have Pekka. No more. Well, we see a Giant Skeleton just here. Yeah, that... so that could be a bit problematic. Um, so we might see a remake coming in. Mm -hmm. we, we might see a remake coming in here if that um, is a card, but we'll keep going just in case we've got a mistake on our side. Um, and so the Ice Golem coming through with the Musketeer. And Meow cleaning up the little the little unit coming through trying to attack. Wasn't able to tank for anything. And the Musketeer now resetting. Elixir being built up slowly. We might not see a lot of action while both players wait for that to come up. Yeah, I'm not sure if they're just waiting for their elixir or just waiting to see whether it will be a new game. But here, here we go. Look, there's a, a balloon and the bats are going to take out that balloon and the sparky Ooh. as well. Yeah, not, I think that after bomb might hit that sparky, but doesn't quite do enough damage to really make a difference. Log coming through, won't do a whole lot. And let's see if the Dark Prince couldn't get through the bats you know you mentioned it bats can do a lot of value they certainly can bats versus sparky excellent defense cry face coming out from the sidelines and it seems as if um rising phoenix will take this so oats were using the band card um and so rising phoenix are going to end up winning that game by default which puts them one up and so we will have to, uh, I I'm just going to wait for confirmation to see if we're going to keep having the next 1v1, if that gives them one point in the set, or if they end up going through um, and uh, if that's going to win the 1v1 altogether. I would imagine it's just the one point on the set, but we'll see what does happen. It can be difficult for these guys to uh, replace single cards really quickly in the intense lobby while they're waiting. And I did just hear confirm that we will still be doing the best of three. So to recap, we have Rising Phoenix, um who are coming in they are going to take away or they'll be taking away the first point in that 1v1 and then we'll be coming back so now it's even a bigger mountain to climb for oats who need to take away two matches if they want to continue this uh continue this battle on their way through and hopefully we'll be shooting to that soon do you think that after having a game like that you'd use the same deck well, look, I mean, you, you've, you've sort of seen what the other team have got. Mm. It would be nice to be able to replay it. Uh, and, you know, you could tweak your deck slightly if, if there's a couple of things that you think that you could do. But, you know, in a high stakes match like this, you really have to follow the rules. And in this case, it was there's two cards that you shouldn't use. And it seems so <laughs> heartbreaking to have to forfeit a game based on not really listening. So uh, let's make sure that we all follow the rules so that we don't have this kind of unfortunate situation happening again. Absolutely. It's rough, though. I can sympathize. I can I can imagine being in the lobby and your game's coming up and then you get, you know, I'm not sure if they get how far in advance they get given the bans. And so if you can't find the right card or if you accidentally use the, the wrong deck, um, mm -hmm. I can sympathize. I know for a couple of the challenges, um, I think this week's challenge we've got the Elite Barbarians one and I've accidentally, mm -hmm. you know, gone into it using the a completely wrong deck uh, than I thought I was using and so mistakes can happen um, but I'm sure that they'll be able to recover I hope and while we yeah. do wait for the uh, the game to come back together, speaking of this week's challenges, we got another little while. I think we got about a little while for the game to load in. So this week's challenge is with the Elite Barbarians. Have you played with uh, that at all? Yeah, I've given that a go. Now, uh, my deck at the moment, as I mentioned last week, I've been running the Clone and Mirror so I thought this would be an excellent way to uh, come into the Elite Barbarian. 
uh, challenge because I can clone those and then I can mirror whatever else I've been doing. Uh, well, obviously mirror the clone and have millions of elite barbarians taking it out. <laughs> uh, didn't quite play out as, as I had hoped, but um, you know, it's, it's still an interesting challenge. But what I am looking forward to in terms of challenge tomorrow, the new challenge begins and it is the Royal Delivery Challenge. And I don't know how that's going to play. Is this going to spawn Royal Delivery boxes all over the board? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe get to work. I, I can't understand what the gameplay is going to be, so I'm <laughs> hanging out for tomorrow because I, I've be got Royal that... Delivery in my deck. Well, I don't. I haven't got it yet. And so that'll be this will be the event that I have to win to get given the card I'm imagining. They usually do this when they bring out new mm. cards um and so we'll sort of we'll have to see how that one comes together uh but yeah it'll be it'll be interesting i hope it is it will be i think if the if it is a challenge where the royal delivery comes out and gets dropped randomly on the on the river mm -hmm. um it's going to be quite a hard one to break through does royal delivery damage air units on its way down yes it does so it damages everything that it falls through uh, and then when it lands on something, it does a hit damage. And then, of course, it pops out a, uh, you know, you've got a, a royal oh, guard yeah. that comes in the attacks them. And so if you can either drop it near the, uh, the river, it lands on everything that's attacking at the river, or if there's a whole lot of battle going on at the tower, then it actually deflects the interest of the whatever's attacking the tower to... Uh, attack the the uh, royal guy that the, jumps the, the, out. The royal guy and, that comes out. Yeah, of, yeah, yeah. And uh, and then of course the tower can do the damage. So I think it's it's most effective on really big uh, big guys that are coming through. So say you've got a, uh, a giant skeleton or something. If you can drop that and then it detracts from it, your tower will attack that because it's too busy. Uh, trying to hit your uh, your royal food that's got the sword. All right, I see. Well, we have seem to be going loading us right into this match. Um, and again, we have Oats on the bottom meow and Nishu. Nishu's taken out the first game of the one v one due to the banned card. And can you just give us a quick reminder on what those banned cards are? So, no skeleton, uh, giant skeleton. Uh, so, no giant skeleton and no pecker and no pecker all right we will not see those we see a mini pecker but those are allowed because they're only small yep. and so we will uh see how this match lays out unless you're taking off the first point in the 1v1 the 1v1s are a best of three and so we will need to rising phoenix still has some hope in this one certainly look at that mega knight has jumped all the way to the tower and is doing a serious attack and backed up by the wizard as well that's going to take out the tower pretty close, 278. A lot of damage coming out. And I forgot to mention the, at the top of the head-to-head -head that the records for these two games. So Oats is the underdog coming into this. They've only got three wins um, coming into this match. Rising Phoenix have six for one. They've only lost one game. Uh, and they're currently wow. down in the 2v2. And so Oats are performing very well. But unfortunately, I know as a Sparky player, the Night Witch and the Sparky do not get along. <laughs> yeah, Bats versus Sparky. Yeah, that's a, a quick finish. I mean, Sparky is so strong normally, and it will take out just about everything in its path, but it seems like something so tiny as little bats and, uh, and Minion Horde as well. Those are the two things that I would use against the Sparky. So the 278 health on that Princess Tower for Rising Phoenix, it's just going to take basically one unit getting a good hit, and then it becomes in spell range for the arrows to take out later. Uh, the Sparky will surely mm -hmm. be dropped here to try and take care of that Golem. So let's see if Meow can get that vital damage. I mean, or he could just cycle through with the, with the arrows and get two hits off, but there's enough attack here to need to save those arrows to wipe out all those surrounding mobs. No, I think we saw a clone for a second there. It cloned a few things, but uh, that Sparky was just wiping out everything. Yeah, massive attacks coming down, and the bats will be taken out this time by the Princess Tower. So now it's Sparky v Golem. 26 seconds. That's a pretty exciting match up there. And we've got a whole so lot of other goblins, and we've got the Witch coming through, and we've got Mega Knights and Emotes Mega everywhere. Damage. Here we go. Can we that. get that one hit left? 
10 seconds left. Ah, the no. bats are going to come through. But the mini pick is going to run straight past. He doesn't get it. It's going to go into overtime. The bats coming through. Mega Minion. Can Meow find that extra 278 damage? Just such a strong attack coming through from Nishu. It's the same play that we saw before, the uh, the wizard versus the golem. I was sort of hoping that that wizard might be placed slightly differently to be able to take out that one hit, but now we've got our clone and so much coming down. We've got under a thousand, seven hundred. This is going to be a turnaround of the game. It Five might be. Four hundred versus a hundred. The sparky can't take out the mega minion. The mega minion's going to throw it. No, he's... Look at that. And he wow. comes out, <laughs> takes it down, and that's Nisha with the 1v1. And so that that puts us at Oates winning the 2v2 and Rising Phoenix one, winning the 1v1. And so for the wow. second time tonight, we're going to go King of the Hill. Wow. This is amazing. We haven't had two King of the Hills in one match yet. So uh, let me just refresh my memory on what the bands are for this one. Now we've got... Log is banned. We've never seen a log, a log. banned before. That's an interesting one. And no mini pecker. Oh, sorry, no pecker. So no, no pecker, log, no pecker. Interesting. So I mean, I think I'd almost so the one v the two v two. Sorry, was quite uh, one sided. Oates did a fantastic job at managing to to control the match at the beginning. They took out that one tower really early. I think um, that I forgot about, <laughs> and then they managed to clean it up at the end and take that second tower. And so with those two players, I think being quite strong, um, I think it's we're going to end up having quite a close a close match up here. This is turning out to be a fantastic night, and uh, the following sure theme of tonight's episode business end of the tournament i think so these teams are becoming so well matched and we're starting off the king of the hill with a red gecko from rising phoenix versus tanky online from oats let's see how this one turns out a cheeky goblin barrel to kick things off and a mega knight to, to try and counter that well look we're gonna have a mega knight versus mega knight standoff followed, followed up with sparky. a sparky Golly! <laughs> <laughs> and the Sparky there takes out a lot of those little skeletons. But I think overall, this is going to be a red gecko is going to take the advantage on this one. Do we get one hit? No, no, no damage from that. And another che a cheeky no. goblin barrel this time from Tanky Online. Cleaned up quickly with the zap. So they've both got goblin barrel. They've both got a mega knight. And they've both and got a princess. Very similar decks. Oh, they and are, look, yeah. And the <laughs> they're almost identical. I'm sensing decks a theme. The <laughs> and this time the uh, fireball comes out instead of the. We haven't seen a Sparky from Red Gecko, though. If they wanted to have the exact same cards, <laughs> the skeletons and the skeletons. Skeletons versus skeletons. These teams are from the same school, and so they must be relatively familiar with each other. Um, I wonder if they've done a bit of a copy of each other's decks just for this match. <laughs> a true way to do a tiebreaker. The, the, the honorable way, doing the exact same cards. The best skill to come through. 800 health left on that tower. Those Goblin Barrels have been doing a lot of work for Rising Phoenix. Let's see if... Uh, Certainly have. Red Gecko can't I've get the a... same value though. Now, will the princess take out those bats that are doing the attacks there? Princess Not is quite. focused on the Wait. Inferno Dragon instead. Both towers have exactly 851 HP. <laughs> this game is so similar. They've got the same cards. They've even done a same amount of damage. Who ever has it's seen not... a game like this before? It's not April 1st yet. I'm not being pranked. <laughs> it's, this, is, this is really happening. And again, ooh, big value there. Takes the Mega Knight back. The Princess will get a couple of hits off, but I think he's going to keep attacking the Mega Knight, and so the splash damage won't hit. Ooh, yeah, this is the a cards big front line We've got the, uh, the Royal Giant and the Sparky. Those are the... Oh, will the Royal Giant get one more hit? He gets wow, it out sure, before he's he taken down. 500 health left here. This game just became a whole lot closer. 15 seconds left, and it's taken oh, out look, just look, like that. Yeah, so we've got two tails taken out. The fireball is 
probably going to do serious damage to that Inferno Dragon. We'll go into overtime. And it's time to reset on the that? next channel. <laughs> and the Bandit coming out to just neutralize that Mega Knight. And the Inferno Dragon will be taken down slowly by the King without doing anything. Well, we've got and another we Inferno again. Dragon birth with an Inferno Dragon. <laughs> now here the princess the, doing her the, best. The, uh, the Royal Giant there was the winner in the last cycle, but didn't manage to hold up this time. No, the skeleton's making quick work, but here come the skeletons for Red Gecko. And this time it looks like we have a small advantage, but important, for Tanky Online while he comes back into this. Now, I believe we mentioned earlier, Tanky Online was the student who's got the 2000 ELO chess rating. Uh, let me just confirm that for you. Uh, Tanky Online, yes, 2000 rating in chess. And so, so this is where that's going to that strategic work. Strategy. Exactly. Because we're that's taking a long play here. Fireball cleaning up a little bit of mess there. But look, this is a, a serious attack. We've got Inferno Dragon, we've got Mega Knights everywhere, we've got Goblin Barrels flying around. I think. Oh, oh and here comes the Giant. big attack! 800, 600. 600 damage. The Royal Giant coming through, and again, here he comes! Yeah. The Royal Giant. Winner on the wow. day for Rising Phoenix. Red Gecko takes it out, sweeping come back in for the first win of King of the Hill. That was the first match. How exciting was wow. that? That was super exciting. Now, look, I mean, we were just on the edges of our seats just watching that, what was happening in the same cards battling against each other and the towers with the same point damage. Now, there was one thing that I think was played as a slight mistake right in the last couple of seconds that I just wanted to point out. Uh, we had the Royal Giant come out and we knew that that was probably going to take out that tower. But the goblin barrel that was uh, sent out went to the princess tower instead of at the royal giant. That might have just been enough to stop the next hit, which won the game. Absolutely. And it comes down to those small decisions. Do you take the glory or do you play it safe? Unfortunately, it did not pay off for Tanky Online. And getting into our second king of the hill, Red Gecko will be defending against Ratchet and Clank the next uh, team member for Oats and a very strong start here from Ratchet and Clank. He's not messing around. Big attack coming Seven, through really? here. 1400 health that. already. Yeah, that balloon did serious damage. It was well backed up with the Inferno Dragon and a few other things that were going on. So look, that was serious. And now we've got the Miner doing a another few hits in there. We might be getting under a thousand with, you know, not even a minute gone. Relentless. Now there is a small elixir uh, build up on Red Gecko's side. Let's see how he acts to it. Now he's using the same deck as last time, but we do have a different deck this time for Ratchet and Clank. And he seems to have equaled it up. In fact, he's actually taking out the... He's taking out that wow, play. He's got the tower that. down. He throws out the well played. They're all very polite players today. But do yeah, you think it's sarcasm? They're, they're friends, they know each other. Do you think they're really saying well played through gritted teeth? <laughs> I think I think because you, they, they know each other, you'd be able to sell, say well played and also feel really good yeah. about it at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, wouldn't, you wouldn't need to be sarcastic to really be like, you're well played. Good game. <laughs> How does that feel? Barrels against each other. Who's going to take out well, the first tower? No, uh, not defended. Oh, That's going to be down to 71. Oh, 71 health versus 21. 25. Look at all these skeletons taking out each other. I mean, that's not going to do any tower damage, but <laughs> who's got the next spell that will take that first tower out? And the smart thing to do here, move on to that other channel coming through from Red Gecko, coming down the right-hand side. Princess Tower takes out the, uh, the tower there, but easily countered, and that little goblin mob will take out their tower. And now minions are already prepared on the right-hand channel there for Ratchet and Clank. Now, about 40 seconds to go. What is going to happen? We're down to 2,900 on the King Tower. Yeah, there was a surprising amount of damage coming down there by those uh, leftover goblins that were not attended to. Here comes the balloon. Big aerial attack coming through here. The minions will take care of the Mega Knight. Not if they get zapped, though. And the Mega Knight coming through. This is going to be big for Red Gecko. Bringing the goblins here as well. This is going to be it. That's how it is. Look at that. 
Strong defense, 900 health left, nine seconds left. Oh, there's tears. I think we're we going to go, go into overtime, but we've got the uh, the Royal Giant, the favorite, the one the last the last round. So let's see, 400, 170. Here we go, the Goblin Barrel. The Goblin Barrel. Oh, taking, taking that straight away with the arrows. We are 178 health left on that one. That Royal Giant is really coming out. He's going to do it again. Here he comes. He has yep. to beat them. One it's Balloon versus Royal the Giant. giant. The and there we go. Royal Giant again is OP. Red Gecko coming out with the Royal Giant. Clutch two games in a row. It feels like a repeat from the last King of the Hill. The first player on Rising Phoenix is taking out two players of Oats so far. We have one player left. I believe we're going to see Meow uh, from Oats Ooh. stand up against Red Gecko. Can he take him down? And if he can, can he run the rest of the gauntlet? Um, we will have to wait and find out. It's been pretty uh, pretty close matches, though, so far, even though the scoreboard is 2-0. and zero. Any changes you think we'll see on uh, on uh, Red Gecko's deck? Well, let's see. I mean, we know the uh, the Royal Giant has been the winner for the last couple of rounds, so that's probably not going to change up. Uh, we've seen some fantastic aerial attacks. You know, everybody's got their balloons and they've got them well supported by other things that are going to take out whatever is thrown at it. So, uh, and the and the goblin barrels, they're everywhere. So Absolutely. I guess we're I mean, just it's gonna... all about that. When it comes down to 25 health and you've got a goblin barrel that you can just throw off onto the back there and get that extra little bit of damage, uh, it makes all the difference. And that's, I think, the same with the Royal Giant. These games have been so close. It's all about just getting mm -hmm. through and pushing through and uh, getting that last hit onto the tower. And the Royal Giants have been phenomenal. That I don't, I don't usually see Royal Giants. Do you think they're considered a, a good card? They're considered pretty OP. Uh, Royal Giant is OP is a, uh, a bit of a Clash Royale meme. So you can look <laughs> that up later. But, um, you know, they, they come through. They, they have their huge cannon under their arm that does a few hundred uh, damage. Plus, they're so strong that even when you drop a, you know, skeleton army or something on them, that's not enough to prevent heaps of damage. So it's a pretty good choice. Because um, that's what we saw. We've seen him walk right it. through those. We've seen him walk right through those skeleton hordes and just still mm. get one or two critical shots off on the princess towers at the right times. And, and uh, win the game. Cool. And win the game. That's what it's ended up coming down yeah. to. And so you know, I think looking into the future, if you're watching Warlocks or Flinders or you know Quanta, Quanta Royal Giant bands, they could come in pretty handy against Rising Phoenix. They're showing everyone else how uh, how it's done. Yeah, well, you know, those other teams that you just mentioned, they've had a really good run on winning games using Poison, you know, a card that only costs two. Uh, and so you compare that to Royal Giant, which costs a lot more, but it, it is a really huge tank card that uh, takes a lot to destroy. Yeah, Poison is... And now we're really in the next matches. one. We are, we are. We got Rising Phoenix with Red Gecko. He's now fighting his third competitor um, and meow trying to keep the hopes alive for oats coming into this match now if red gecko can take this match out they will win the series that will be a what we call a reverse sweep they were uh, all mm -hmm. the way down and they're coming back to win in the tiebreaker um with oats taking a convincing 2v2 so let's see if rising phoenix can do that but if meow can win then they might have the opportunity to bring it through and uh take out the rising phoenix and give them their second loss of the season now we just saw there the royal giant versus skeleton army combo that we we're just talking about before but it was backed up by some other things that helped to take it out i was sort of hoping to see the sparky take on the royal giant but uh we didn't see that but now we're going to see sparky taking on some uh a mega knight instead a uh, mega knight and the mega knight <laughs> actually manages to fall to the mini picker just before the Sparky, that Sparky's living on a slither of health. <laughs> the skeleton's coming through. Shooting them down, not a problem. Just picking them off one by one as they approach. Skeleton's not uh, not much of a match for a fully loaded Princess Tower. No, certainly not. 1800 health with one minute and 20 left to go. Here comes the Inferno Dragon. Versus, they choose the Wizard on Oats' side. Meow picking the now wizard to face off. that'll be interesting. 
I don't think we're going to see any tower damage with that. They'll attack each other. So you can and the arrows neutralizing the, the goblin barrel. barrel. And the bats taking the advantage there. And here comes the wizard. He'll get a couple, a couple of pop shots off right now, unless he's distracted, which he was. Mm, yeah. And yeah. here we go. Our is favorite of the mm. I think. No. no. Oh, because the Sparky we've got the didn't even get a shot. The Sparky will take out a bunch of uh, small guys instead. But will that Great Sparky arrows. end up getting some tower damage? Mega Knight versus Mega Knight. And the Sparky's not going to be able to do much about that. Here comes the Goblin Barrels um, a little bit late. Skeletons will take over that and the Mega Knight will crush his old foe. And here comes the Inferno to get a lot of damage over time. See you later for the Mega Knight. Now what we're seeing here is not even much chip damage at all from anything. All the, the uh, attacks are being defended so well that hardly much is getting through. But now we see at the last minute a Royal Giant coming through, but the that Mini Pekka has been the answer every time for the Royal Giant. Yeah, now that so we're down into so overtime, 1400 health left on that tower every single piece of damage that you can get down on those towers becomes vitally important um, and so let's see if red gecko can continue just to chip away at that damage um, to win either when overtime expires or if he can manage to kill that tower the sparky turning around wiping out those <laughs> nice and, and now we've got a sparky and we've got a dark knight here and we've got the mega knight look at that attack coming through is one of them going to be able to get any damage on that tower this is a massive combo a massive attack coming down here but the princess wiping out a lot of those a lot of those mobs a lot of the uh, swarm units okay so now we've got uh another go with this uh, round of cards again but again look that mini pekka is the answer for yeah, that royal cleaned giant up that royal, cleaned it up completely Every and now the skeletons time. are going to try and take out that mega knight see how close they get not quite but the sparky will try and finish the job and the dark prince will absorb the uh the damage from the mega knight there with his shield and seal it to the royal not the royal giant now look how we... Two Sparkies! Two Sparkies! Here we go, <laughs> two Sparkies versus Mega Knight. Well, look, you know, they've, they've ultimately done their job, and... Not... Look. It's not going to be enough. We've got 10 seconds left in overtime, <laughs> and we got this big attack coming through here. The Royal Giant's going to walk on through, try and get one hit off, and he does. It comes down to the most health, and unfortunately, Red Gecko has absolutely done the job. Tiebreaker, who's going to win? Meow's going to tower as we break very quickly with a wow. 1,600 health difference at the end of the game there. Really patient play. Now, we didn't see any crowns break during that match. Um, it just came down to that very careful, methodical chip damage, and it shows how important that can actually be during a game. Absolutely. And I think, again, we can say that the Royal Giant was the winner on the day for that round as well in the very last time that it was played. But all of the other times that it was played, it was completely defeated by the mini picker. Absolutely. Um, and so at the end of the day, a great effort on Rising Phoenix's side. And so let's take a look at the results for the night. How did we turn out? Quanta versus MSW. Quanta walked away with the win, tying up the top of the leaderboard with MSW with six wins. Flinders Crabs losing to Warlocks. And our final game of the night, Oats versus Rising Phoenix. Rising Phoenix coming away with the win after dropping the first 2v2. Great effort by Rising Phoenix to be able to stick in there and uh, come back into the game to, to, to stick in there and the mental fortitude required to take away that first loss and claw your way back from death at every single match that they played. And so a fantastic job there. Um, but we are missing one key component of the night. We have not yet announced the Caster's Choice Award, which we give out to oh. a team every week for uh, for the community submissions. That When they tell us about the team, we pick our favorites. Um, so what have we got tonight, Blendy? Well, I think this time, look, you know, we've had some great information come through from our teams. And tonight, I would like to award the Caster's Choice Award 
to Oats. They gave us some excellent information and they uh, told us that their team strategy was just to generally be OP and I think that's an excellent <laughs> way to be so well done on winning the castle's choice tonight i wonder if their team strategy instead of being op was to be royal giants then they maybe they would have won tonight but who knows <laughs> uh, unlucky for them <laughs> good job from rising rising phoenix um but that is all for tonight a huge thank you to our sponsors vodafone new zealand tcl and uh jbl for the audio the amazing audio equipment and thank you all for watching but that is all the games that we have for you this week be sure to stick around next week for our final week of league play as we battle it out for their final chances to make playoffs it has been a pleasure having you with us tonight um blendy thank you for being here with us also and from myself and the entire team here at high school league we hope that you enjoyed it at home and we hope that you stay safe and keep gaming and so good night and gg okay.